features and distribution of sand dunes and salt marshes. So starting with sand dunes. So what are the features of sand dunes? Well, you'd expect them to be made from blown in sand. Marum grass is a special type of vegetation, very common to sand dunes. They have an undulating shape. Think about the Sahara Desert, how much those sand dunes go up and down and they're fragile. So they are easily eroded, particularly by high winds. What factors affect the distribution of sand dunes? First up, a wide beach with large quantities of sand is needed in order for a sand dune to form. So the prevailing wind needs to be onshore. That means blowing from the sea to the shore. And that's kind of obvious if you think about the fact that that sand needs to build up on the beach and you need suitable locations for the sand to build up. So how does the sand dune build up? First up, you need the beach to dry out at low tide. There's that all-important onshore prevailing wind again. And that causes the sand to build up commonly around obstacles. You will get over time the sand accumulating leading to the sand dune building up in size. You get lots of mini sand dunes building up because they get protection from the original sand dune. So another sand dune builds up on the seaward side, so facing the sea. And then vegetation, such as the marum grass, the roots of that grass will help fix down the sand. Now, sand dunes are quite extreme places for this vegetation. Though so sand dune vegetation needs to be able to cope with some quite extreme conditions, including salty conditions, so salinity, A lack of moisture due to the sand dune drying out quickly. High winds and the fact that it's often, the vegetation is often submerged by the wind blown sand. So marum grass is extremely specialised to be able to cope with these tough conditions. Moving on to salt marshes. A salt marsh is an area of coast that is flooded and drained by salt water, which has been brought in by the tides. And the salt marsh forms behind a spit when water movement slows down so more material is deposited. In terms of their distribution, salt marsh formation is encouraged in places where there is protection from wind. You need partly salty water 
and you need water regularly flooded by tides. A large expanse of mud flat is also required. So to really point out the features of a salt marsh, quite repetitive, but you need that large expanse of mud flat, slow moving water, salt tolerant vegetation plants, which may include grasses, reeds and rushes. There's often peat, which comprises of decomposing vegetation. partly salty water and water regularly flooded by tide. And remember, salt marshes provide a really nice ecosystem for a lot of birds.